So now I'm going to talk about the DDAA model in international macroeconomics, but here I'm going to incorporate permanent policy changes, right? So before we talked about temporary changes, like a one-time government spending increase or a one-time increase in the money supply, and we saw what effects that had on the exchange rate and output. But here we're going to talk about things that investors view to be permanent, and that's actually going to have different results or different outcomes for the variables, right? So to think about it, uh, temporary effects only last for one period, and you kind of forget about the model, and you record your result, and you're done. Here we're going to have two periods. Generally speaking, it could be T and T plus 1, or present and future, or I could call it now and later. But the presence of the future actually affects expectations today. All right, so knowing that the future exists makes investors act differently today. The example I always think about is if you thought the euro was going to collapse next Tuesday, you would not wait till Monday night to sell all your euros. You would sell it now. So thinking about the future makes you behave differently today. Okay? The thing that happens with a second period, too, is that prices adjust slowly. And this model is like a Keynesian model with sticky prices and slow price adjustment. Between now and later, prices are going to rise, and then that's going to have an effect. And that will actually make some of the variables revert or some curves shift as like a second shift. Um, but the big thing is that results differ between the two models. Even in the short run, right? expectations are going to have an effect even before this second effect kicks in. Okay? So let's review the short run and the long run. In, in macroeconomics, right, and actually in all of economics, the short run is time to adjust for all variables. It could be costs or something else. In macro, the price level is the thing that adjusts that makes the short run different from the long run. So eventually prices adjust, prices rise, and sometimes that has an effect that counteracts the temporary effect of a certain policy. Right? So prices appear in both curves. In the AA curve, part of it is the money market, so MS over P, or real money supply. If prices go up, real money supply goes down, it's going to be like a leftward shift in AA. But the DD curve also has prices because demand for goods incorporates the current account, which has the real exchange rate, and prices are here. And generally speaking, if prices rise, then sales fall for exports. But you could also talk about the AD curve in principles of macro, where if prices rise, all real spending on goods drops. But either way, price increases will reduce demand for goods, and that will shift DD to the left as well. So both curves can shift between the, sh between the present and the future. Okay? The thing that's also important is expectations. And so, like I mentioned, knowledge of the future changes expectations now, and it changes behavior now, and you get different results for temporary changes versus permanent changes. Okay? And expectations show up in the AA curve because of expected rate of return, and it's going to show up in the ERR foreign. Right? And so that's part of the asset market. So the ERR curve is going to shift immediately when policies are implemented. Okay, So investors, for example, if there's an inflationary policy, if the money supply expands, investors know there's going to be inflation in the future, and they're actually going to move their money now. And they're going to think the foreign country is better than the country that's going to have inflation, and so it's going to make the other country look better. Okay, So let's kind of look at prices first. So prices show up in the AA curve, as I mentioned over here, with the money market. If prices increase, so this is going to be the second shift in the curve, then money supply contracts and interest rates go up, okay? And that's equivalent to a monetary contraction or AA to the left, okay? And this happens between periods as a second shift when, when it shows up, all right? I'm not showing it here, but in the DD curve, the current account is a function of home income and foreign income and the real exchange rate. If prices go up, the current account drops, and that's also DD to the left, and that is a fiscal contraction. Right. Now, expectations are going to show up on this curve here, and so if money supply increases, the future has an effect now. People know what's going to happen. They anticipate inflation, and so ERR shifts to the right. Investors think the foreign country is going to be better than the country as an investment option. Okay, And so what's really important is this idea that you have two shifts. So without expectations, the new exchange rate would be a little bit weaker. But with expectations, the two new curves in red cross way up here. So this actually causes the exchange rate to weaken a lot. Now over time, like we showed before, prices are going to rise and money supply is going to shift back and the interest rate is going to rise again. You think it'd be here, but this curve stays forever. Investors are permanently shy of this country. They permanently expect inflation. They're not going to change their expectations back. They think, well, I'm going to keep my money abroad because this country just had high inflation. And so the, in the green line, part of it returns to normal, but this stays here. And so the new expected rate of return and the new-ish or original you know, interest rate cross here. So the currency does strengthen a little bit, but not back to where it started. And so this is the famous Dornbush overshooting model, that the monetary increase causes a big depreciation, 
followed by a slow reversion that's part way back, but it's like a big move and a tiny move um, as opposed to one smooth move at once. And so it's going to have wild movements, and this explains exchange rate volatility. So you could talk about why exchange rates are more volatile or more variable than predicted. This model incorporates expectations, and I think that's true for any asset. So, so the idea that investor expectations can cause wild swings is, is true for stocks, and it's also true for currencies. Okay, so now let's look at the two policies I've been looking at. Here's a permanent fiscal expansion. Investors know what's coming. They, they know the end result, and they change their behavior today. And so with a fiscal expansion, we know that the exchange rate should appreciate and income should rise. We've seen that before. But investors are more likely to put their money into this country because they anticipate growth or for whatever reason. And so the home country looks better. The foreign country has less of a rate of return. And so expectations are going to move simultaneously in anticipation of the currency rise. Okay? And so these two curves move simultaneously. And the end result is that output does not move, but the exchange rate moves a lot. Okay? And so if your policy is to use fiscal expansion to increase GDP, it actually has no effect because investors see the future, they know what's going to happen, and they put their money into this country that's growing much more than the other country, right? So relatively speaking, the foreign country has a lower rate of return. And so these two combined lead to no end result in output. So this, this has no effect. And so if your goal is to increase GDP, it's, it's actually not effective. Okay? Now monetary expansion has a couple of moves, and it's going to be a little bit more complicated. But but we know with monetary expansion, you expect AA to move. Right? This is what would happen under a temporary change, and you think that this is your end result. Um, but uh, the simultaneous uh, increase in ERR in the foreign country, because again, the foreign country looks better because this country is going to have inflation. It's just increased its money supply. And so this is how investors factor it in, and this is what we've seen before. And then over time, right, we've already seen this in the model, right, but this incorporates GDAA. AA is going to partially move back. It doesn't go all the way back. It moves partially back to its original, and it's got to line up just right, okay? Um, as AA is moving back, I mentioned that DD is going to move because the price increase over time is, is while it's moving AA, it's also moving DD, like that fiscal contraction. And so these are both going to move back, right? This moves down, this moves up, and they have to line up exactly perfectly so you are also at your original output, okay? But here the exchange rate is slightly weaker. Now, there's nothing to be said. Is it weaker than the temporary? Is it stronger? I could line it up differently. But compared to the starting point, right, it's going to have a bigger increase here, and then eventually over time it's going to move back. There could be a temporary increase in output, right, and then slowly uh, move back, but your end result is a weaker currency and no change in output, right? Fiscal had a stronger currency, right? Uh, monetary expansion winds up with a weaker currency that overshot, right? It moved way weaker, and then it got a little stronger, but the net result is weaker, and so there's no change in Y, okay? So that's the big takeaway, okay? So two things. One, we're incorporating two time periods, which gives us a slow adjustment between periods, as well as expectations changing things today. Um, and, and also, the second outcome that we get from this is that these policies don't really have a long-run effect, okay? While the currency is overshooting just in the currency market, you could see the overshooting happening here, but there's also this idea that output is increasing, but it's also, then it's coming back to where it started, right? So for both fiscal and monetary policy, they can have temporary effects, or if they're considered temporary, but if they're considered permanent, eventually neither policy will have an effect, okay? And that kind of brings the classical view in. Right? Remember, Keynesian and classical economics are identical given enough time. Right? Keynesians believe that there's some price adjustment. Classical economists believe there's no t that happens instantaneously. Right? Um, this result is the same. Right? Uh, but here we show that intermediate adjustment process. Right? But but the net result is no increase in output, which was the policy goal. Anybody who wants to use fiscal or monetary policy to uh, affect GDP will actually have no effect in the long run. Right, so we've incorporated two periods, expectations and price adjustment, and then we can show how the permanent effects are different from the temporary effects.